take three. Welcome back. I have no idea why my camera keeps shutting off. I have to believe I have a bad SD card, so I just pitched it across the room and put a new one in. But welcome. <laughs> Thanks for being here today. I hope your day is going good. Wow, it's just crazy how much that happening aligns with really where we're going today. But welcome. <laughs> Take a deep breath, Trace. Just take a deep breath. I know you're with me. Last Friday, I shared a very powerful message on Instagram stories. And typically when I do that, I'll take a poll asking my Instagram audience if they would like me to save the content, send it off to my editor, and share it in a YouTube video. And every time I've taken that poll, it's always the same results. More of you are in favor. If that doesn't speak to you, no worries. Just tap out if you've already watched it or you just don't like them. My life's work is not to please everyone. Um, and I would never, it's never a goal because that's not my life's work. That's not my life's task. And we're going to be talking about life's work and life's task, not only mine, but yours today in this video and what I shared on stories. My life's work is to be a voice for those that want to hear what I have to say because, again, as a certified professional coach, my job and my role is to help other people see and live their potential, to see and live an abundant life, um, achieve goals, whatever those goals look like for them, and to live the optimal life how they see it. So that's why I'm here. And again, if it's not something you want to hear, do not ever feel pressured to sit through a video of mine. There's plenty of videos out there. Find something that will serve you today. But I took it upon myself without doing a poll to save the material and content because to me, the message was powerful. And I had a few of you reach out to me sharing how much it touched you and spoke to you. So why not save it here? And I'm not going to spend any more time in my intro because we're going to dive into the material, but stay tuned until the end because I have something really fun and big coming up that I think a lot of you will enjoy considering we got a few emails, a few reach outs with a really, really neat request. So stay tuned until the end, but let's take a look at last Friday's Instagram stories where I shared that I I have, have just been completely stressed. I basically feel like I got sacked in the jaw. And this, this video is coming out one week later. So I have no, I filmed it one week ago. So I have no idea what this particular week looks like because this was pre-filmed. So one only knows, but I know who does know. And um, I don't have, I don't have the outcome in life, right? I don't have the outcome in life. I just need to be obedient. But let's take a look at last Friday's Instagram stories. Good Friday morning. You are looking at a favorite dish for an appetizer that I make. It is my bean dip. And it is for tonight's festivities, which I talk about in the Friday newsletter today. Yes, we have a little theme going on and I explain why we're having a dinner party tonight why it's the theme that it is, and a lot of other goodies in Friday's newsletter. If you're not subscribed, tap the link, get subscribed. And also, if you want the recipe to this amazing and favorite dish, you can go to my personal brand website, hit the recipe tab, look for bean dip, and you'll find the recipe. Also, new video on YouTube. This will get you thinking. I know what you're thinking when you see, are you a passive person? Mm. It's probably not what you're thinking, what I'm talking about. You don't want to miss today's video. It will get you thinking. So just published it. Check it out. Tap the link and... Get on that cardio machine, tap that link, and make it a great day. I'll be back a little bit later to take another poll. Now let's flip, because we're talking about learning, to the actives. The actives come from the lens of 
This is happening for me. So while this may be hard, it may be hard for me to resist all the food at the gathering while everyone else is celebrating, I have a goal. This is happening for me. It always will because the food will always show up. The temptations will always show up. The vacations, the parties, the gatherings, the people, someone dropping off food, there always will be something to show up. This is happening for me so that I can stretch myself, so that I can exercise that resistance muscle. Wow, Tracy sounds so happy and thriving and just all is great in her life. That's how I sound this morning, don't I? Actually, it's a complete contrast to that. I'm quite miserable physically, mentally, emotionally. I'm drained. I'm defeated. Um, I've been under an enormous amount of stress the entire week. I've been overwhelmed. I've cried and I've lost my temper which doesn't happen often. Very toxic. I had a very toxic, <laughs> um, tr I, had, I was so triggered, I, I defaulted way back to an old pattern and blew a freaking fuse. Yeah, not really proud of it, but I have no regrets because I'm always learning. But no, this, this week has been just a freaking crappy crapshoot. <laughs> Um, and it still is, <laughs> and I'm miserable today because I started my period. Isn't that pretty? Uh, no, I'm just, I'm like you. I'm just like you. I get up every day and I have choices. I have choices. Regardless of whether I show up with how I'm feeling or I choose not to, and I choose to show up as a positive, poised, put together, calm, cool, and collected person, which we know I wasn't all that this week. <laughs> the day is still young, Tracy. The day is still young. There's choices. There's choices in all this. I am choosing to rise above, despite what, what's going on in my world. I'm choosing to rise above. You have that same choice because it won't change anything. Whether you show up in a positive way or in a defeated emotional way, reactive. Oh, <laughs> sneak peek. <laughs> it probably won't change what's going on in your life. But is that what's controlling you? Are you being managed by your emotions? Or are you saying, okay, this is, this is what's being dealt to me right now. I can either be bitter, I can get bitter, or I can get better. I can let the enemy work through me in my words, or I can let my Lord and Savior work through my words. You always have the choice. You really do. But most people succumb to their emotions, and then they have a reason to back it. While maybe my blowing a fuse this week towards someone... Well, it doesn't mean that that person wasn't deserving in what they heard me say. That's not the point. That's about them. How I chose to show up is 100% on me. And because I know that's not me, that's not who I want to be, when I came to my senses, which was very, qu was very quick, I apologized to that person, not, not for what they heard necessarily, how I chose to show up. I said to that person, I don't want to be a person like this. I relapsed. I relapsed to a very old dark pattern that I once had. It's been many years I've worked through this. I've worked so hard and continuing. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the opportunity, for showing me that we are always at work and giving me that opportunity to learn and grow. No regrets. I'm an eager student, always willing to learn. It was just an opportunity, and he was just reminding me, we are always at work. <laughs> and the devil and the enemy is always at work, too. So I took the higher road. I apologize for how I chose up. That's on me, regardless of what happened. No one made me do that. No one made me lose my temper. That was on me. And this ties in with today's video. Which, which side are you falling in? Are you the passive 
Are you the one that always has the reason to back every decision you make and every choice you make in life? There's always a reason. I'm going to blame someone else. Well, what is that doing for you? How are you moving the needle, driving the bus, raising the bar when you live your life like that at the mercy of everyone else? That will, that, I'd be willing to bet that will never serve you. The weather doesn't help. The weather doesn't help today. Yeah. It's a perfect example. When it rains, it pours. That's, that's a great way to put it. When it rains, it pours. And that's okay. Because everything is happening because it should be. And it's all happening for my betterment. I hope today what I share is speaking to someone that needs to hear it. At the end of the day, I believe we all need to hear it. Because we will not, this, this life does not come free from troubles, pain, suffering. No one gets off the hook. So if my message doesn't apply to what you're going through today, there will be a time where it will apply. And I hope that you can bank this somewhere and remember what I'm sharing. Yeah, I will. Friday's newsletter will have a, a crumb. I'll give you a crumb <laughs> just to one of the things that showed up this week, which was nothing more than a paper cut. <laughs> it really, I was just like, oh yeah, no big deal. Yeah, just another day in the life. It was really just a paper cut, but a lot of people would probably think it would have been a huge trigger for me, what I share in the newsletter. It wasn't. I, ne I, didn't even, I didn't even feel stress. I did initially just because I could have gotten hurt physically. Um, so I had a moment, but I wasn't tripped up, believe it or not, because it was just a paper cut. It was just a paper cut. And I kind of did see it coming. Um, I predicted it. <laughs> and I shared the story about predicting it. So a lot of great things in today's newsletter. Tap the link again if you're not subscribed. Get today's newsletter. Get in the know. I may have shared the wrong recipe. <laughs> That's the thing. When you are overwhelmed and stressed, a lot of paper cut because you're distracted, which... I plan to do a video. I feel very motivated to do a video on how we have to have a backup plan for when we're going through something that could distract us and throw us off. Um, and I have that pretty set and solid, but I think everyone needs to have a back backup plan because this is when you're going to walk into a room and forget what you went in there for because your mind is somewhere else and it makes sense. Don't beat yourself up. You're human. We're emotional creatures, whether you want to believe it or not. It's what we do with them. But this is when little errors take place, and I'm seeing it, I'm seeing it, but I've, I'm, I'm resourcing all my backup plans, so I do plan to do a video on setting yourself up for success for when you're overwhelmed and stressed and something shows up in your life, but I'll put the new link in here for the right rest. All right, doing a little hands-free because we're multitasking. It's funny, too, because <clears throat> as you know, I've been tracking my HRV, my heart rate variability for, I'm on a streak. I think I'm 20 some days in, maybe 25 days on a streak, meaning I haven't missed a day. So the very first thing I do in the morning when I wake up, the very first thing I do is I put my heart rate monitor on and I check and I take an HRV reading and it takes a couple of minutes to do that. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you what today's heart rate variability is. Read, just read what it says about my HRV. And it all, it, everything always makes sense. Now, do I let the reading affect my choices? No. Now I'll show, show you yesterday's. So if you don't understand what heart rate variability is and what it means for you, it has a lot to do with the stress that your body is under, uh, which can be stress from, let's say, a workout. 
It can be stress from an external force that's coming through you. Um, it's just, it's a measure. It's something that you measure. If you're someone who um, is kind of placebo effect type, where like if you read a pamphlet on a prescription drug or prescription medication, now you're going to have all the symptoms and side effects. If you're that type of person, you probably wouldn't want to measure your HRV. I have a healthy relationship with measuring a lot of different data. I'm a data <laughs> nerd. I, I'm not, you know, I don't like math equations, but I love numbers and I love data and I love tracking and metrics. I'll be honest, even when I do get a low HRV reading and I am highly stressed, um, and it may encourage me to take a rest day, <laughs> active recovery. I don't honor. I don't. I, no, I don't let that affect me. Um, actually, I've had some really great workouts. Even maybe when I've had a low HRV reading, advising that I go into some breathing exercises and do active recovery type of work, like which would be walking or something like that, because it may just not work for me to take that day as a rest day. So it's just information. A lot of things in life for me is nothing more than information. I get to choose what to do with it, but it'll be interesting. So I'm going to share yesterday's HRV reading, and then let's go back to last week. Like if we could just go back one week Let's let's see what can happen in a week. That's why we don't know when external things are going to show up in our life and stress us and tax us. Okay, the next so I showed you today and I showed you yesterday. Now it's interesting they were both a 5, but one was parasympathetic and one was sympathetic, right? because I'm all over the place. When we're stressed, we can be, we're just all over the place. Now we're going to jump back and look at one week ago today when I was experiencing really virtually no stress. It hadn't shown up till about Monday when I got socked in the jaw. That's what I call it. I got socked in the jaw on Monday. So I get socked in the jaw and I managed that Monday and Tuesday really well. When, by Wednesday, it, it slowly went downhill. And so, and it showed up even in my HRV, but I'll show you f last Friday, one week ago today, and what a week can do, right? We all know how life can change, how much it can change, well, it, from minute to minute, but what one week, what can happen in one week? Some of you who just kind of are skating through life, with not like any major stressors, could be thinking, wow, I mean, like what could possibly be stressful in Tracy's life? I mean, she has just a beautiful, she has a beautiful life. Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> I have an absolutely beautiful life. I really honestly do. <laughs> um, doesn't mean it's perfect. I have a very imperfect, beautiful life. I have a very flawed, I have a flawed, beautiful life. That will confuse some of you. <laughs> yeah, you can be happy and thriving and successful. Um, but here's something I've really found. And, and, and you take this and let this sink in how it applies to you. The bigger the work the bigger the task I do, well, let me put it to you this way. We all have been given a life's task. We've all been given a life's work. It's our purpose in what we're called to do. Now, some haven't found that yet. I didn't actually find that until I was in my 30s, that this is my life's work. I'm called to do this. Now, it was in front of me as a child. I just didn't see it because we get, uh, we get, we get sidetracked and it gets delusional by what the noise in what well-meaning loved ones tell us our life purposes or what we're called to do. That's why so many people end up in professions that they're miserable in because they're not really doing life's task, what they were called to to do life's work, okay? Now that doesn't necessarily mean that 
in doing life's work, life's task, what you were called to do, you're going to make an income. You're going to draw an income on that. So I get it. Sometimes we need to work in our life's task or life's work is something that is not where it's going to draw an income. The ideal the ideal is when you can do life's work, life's task, live your purpose, and you can monetize it, meaning you can draw an income because you have goods or services that others buy, and therefore you draw an income and you are doing life's purpose, life's work, life's task that was gifted to you. That's the ideal, and I am fortunate. I feel blessed to be able to do that, to monetize my life's work, to actually draw an income from doing that. It's a beautiful place to be, and I am so thankful. I actually, I actually did spend many years doing my life's work, not knowing I was doing my life's work because I wasn't drawing an income doing it. Did you hear that? <laughs> I actually spent many of my adult years doing life's task, life's work, what I was called to do. I just didn't, I, was, I wasn't aware that's what it was because I wasn't drawing an income from doing it. I was raising my children and raising my family, and I, and, but, but I was actually at the same time doing what I was called to do, helping others. I mean, I can go more into detail. But here's what I found when it comes to having a very flawed, imperfect, beautiful life that comes with trouble, stress, struggle, hurt, pain, um, discomfort, betrayal. So many things come with a beautiful life. I really wish I would have gotten ready first <laughs> and gotten on here because I am getting ready today. Um, it's a beautiful place when you fully understand that. And I fully understand that. I don't have expectations that I'm going to go through life and I won't experience these because that wouldn't be the reality and it wouldn't serve me to have that misconception or that illusion. But what I have found is the bigger the task, uh, because although I'm doing life's task, the more magnified I'm doing it, the more these little stressors or big stressors like the one I'm experiencing right now show up. And that's because I am such a threat to the devil's work. I am, he is so threatened by my, by my work and what I bring to this world and in, in drawing people closer to the Lord, drawing people closer to living a life of abundance. Now, when I was kind of hanging out, laying low, and maybe not doing life's task in such a magnified way, I didn't experience as many paper cuts, as many nuances, as many stressors. Because I wasn't a big target. But because I'm doing big things right now, my work is on fire. I am such a heavy target for the enemy to do his, his will, right? Um, but I have to stay faithful. I have to stay convicted in my faith that I need to stay the course and do what I'm called to do. That's being obedient, which, you know, is kind of, I don't have a word of the year, but I would say I do without really purposely choosing it. It was chosen for me, and that is to be obedient. And that is every day. How am I going to be obedient today? Because that is my number one responsibility. I don't have outcome. But the bigger, the bigger, the more amplified, the more magnified of my life's work that I put out into this world the more I'm a target. And better me than you, because I know how to manage it. I know how to, I know how to push through. But if you feel, wow, I don't have like these things go on in my life. I don't have these big stressors. Well, I don't have the answer for that, but maybe that's where you challenge yourself and you say, am, first of all, am I doing life's task? Am I doing life's work? Or am I, am I in an autopilot mode actually avoiding, maybe out of fear, believing in yourself, believing you're worth it, of doing what life's work, life's task, what I was called to do? Because if you did step into that power and you did choose to do that, just know that there's going to be consequences from the, from the enemy, right? The enemy is going to pounce. So staying safe and playing small is, is 
You know, it's pretty sexy looking, right? It's pretty safe there. But that's why, if you're wondering why is so much going on this year in my life, and, and it started before the the new year, but that's why. That's why. And that's okay. Because it's all showing up for me. It's not showing up to me. This is not happening to me. I am not a victim to this. This is showing up for me. It's showing up for me. If you haven't watched today's video yet, you'll want to. Because we talk about that. What's happening to you and what's happening for you. It's happening for me. Okay, I have to step away. Tracy, step away. Get ready. Move on. You want to get to a place where you can overcome this way? You gotta have awareness. You gotta be able to take the pulse on your own life. You have to spend time in solitude and self-reflect. You gotta be aware of what's going on with you, with you. The Live a Mastery Life workshop will give you the tools you need if you decide to use them. I walk you through step by step how you can live a mastery life, how you can take power in managing yourself when you're triggered, when you're stressed, when you're overwhelmed, when you're at the mercy of other people. It's a powerful workshop. I recommend it for everyone can tap the link or the next clip. You guys, look at how fun are these cupcakes. <laughs> how fun is our centerpiece? It's the red flag. Oh my gosh, I love these. I am back for another poll. This will be my third one this week and I really appreciate you guys taking advantage of them. I think I shared one on Tuesday and one on Wednesday, so check out the Tuesday and Wednesday highlight. And then I shared the results the next day, which tomorrow I will share the results for this poll. So let me just kind of go into it and explain. My business manager, Haley, took over my newsletter on Tuesday, which I thought was amazing because she has such great taste in things. So when she takes over, she shares some of the things that she loves, which I think is nice. It switches things up. Haley also reads. She's a big bookworm, if that is still a term. She's probably reading at least three books at any given time, and she reads books year-round. She's like on Goodreads, all of that. So she's a great source. If you love to read, she always would make great recommendations. And she shared a whole bunch of Goodreads in there. And then she also shared what she bought in the Sephora Spring Savings event. And then in today's newsletter, I shared what I bought, Chloe bought, McKenna bought in the Spring Savings event. Don't forget that that, um, that sale ends on uh, Monday. 
So I'll, I'll actually put a link in here to get to Sephora. Don't forget to put in yay save. I'll put the code in at checkout to get your savings, but see today's newsletter um, for what, what my purchases and some of my girls uh, purchased. But one of the things that Haley shared in the newsletter that was that she watched my Live a Mastery Life workshop where I walk you through how to create personal daily documents for yourself. And that prompted her to create her personal daily document. And she shared it in Tuesday's newsletter. Like she shared a little picture like where you could look down at it. I don't think you could actually see what was on it. Um, but she, of course, she always has to add her creative touches to it, which I am always like, I want one like yours. Well, she also talked about a bingo board. This is something that she implemented this year that just helps to keep her accountable on something that she's trying to achieve each month. month. And she creates it as a bingo board. And if she gets a bingo, she rewards herself with something. So she talked a little bit about that. Well, we had a huge reach out. Several people reached out to my personal email. I got a couple text messages. We got some uh, emails in the customer support requesting that she share more about her bingo board. So that prompted us or prompted me to approach her and see if she would want to do a bingo board workshop. I told her not to feel pressure to get back with me right away to give us some thought, but I said, I think it would be really fun and I'd love to create a bingo board for me. Maybe I share what would go on my bingo board. She can walk us through the steps to do it. Maybe give us a couple templates. I really don't know. We haven't really talked through what the dynamics would be because we don't know if we would get enough people interested. So I'm going to take a couple polls. The first one here is, would you be interested in taking a bingo board workshop. Oh, well, I'll, I'll also put a link in. Let me put a link in here to the Tuesday newsletter just in case you missed it or if you want to read it again to get more familiar with what I'm talking about. And then in the next clip, I will take the poll to see if you'd be interested in taking the workshop. As always, all workshops are recorded. You would also have that recording forever. For as long as you keep it, it's yours. So take the poll. Would you, and please, you know, be honest. If you say yes, you know, I'm always like, it's okay to say no. No one's looking at your name. We're just looking at numbers here. We're just looking at a percentage and looking at numbers. Uh, if that, if it, if it would be something that interests you, and again, it really doesn't matter what date or time, although we have a date in mind because it will be recorded and everyone will get the recording. And again, that is yours. There's no expiration on, there will be no expiration on the recording. So take the poll, let me know. And then once I get feedback to see if it interests you, maybe tomorrow or the next day, if I get enough interest or we get enough interest, I will maybe take another poll to see if a Saturday or Sunday is better because we, we have a couple different dates. One is a Saturday and one is a Sunday, but we'll get to that after we find out how many people are interested. Good Saturday morning. Yes, rough looking. <laughs> Still a little rough feeling, but it's these periods. They're just awful. You know, going six months, no period, over six months, no period. And now they're coming back. They're just, they just are pretty brutal. <laughs> because you, you did want to know. <laughs> and actually, I'm sure many of you are thankful that someone talks about this. Yeah. I'll be that person. You may need to tap back and look at and reread what I just posted um, so it makes sense. So when people say everything happens for a reason, you know, I, I'm not sure where I fall on that. It's it's easy to just follow what everyone says, but I really try to think for myself. Um, but I do believe... I do believe that everything happens for a lesson, whether it's to the positive or you know negative, but 
I think people, you know, we have a little bit of confirmation bias. We all have it. <laughs> don't think that you don't. We all have a little bit of confirmation bias in us where we we will build a story to confirm something. Well, it was meant to be, right? Well, you know, that can fail us sometimes. So there's a there's a little lesson or tip for you for the day to really reflect on that one. Um, we can make anything seem like it should have been, right? But was it really in God's will? That's always where you want to revert back to. Well, well, if you if you so choose. But what this person direct messaged me about being put into my story or however she worded it, again, tap back. She absolutely, yeah, God absolutely put her to watch my story for a reason. Absolutely. That is his divine doing. That is his will. Uh, And I've been talking a lot about that more openly than maybe what I have in the past. And I will continue. I'm not here to, my purpose in, in life's task is not to turn people on. So if you're turned off, (laughs) <laughs> and, and and no one has shared this. I'm, please don't think I'm saying this for a reason. Um, I have not had anyone share that. But this also will be a message if you reflect on it. My life's task is not to turn people on. That's You have to figure that one out. My life's past is to deliver a message to those that need to hear it. That's my life's work. Are you doing life's work? whatever that is for you. Do you know what that is? Don't, my, you, you younger ladies and gentlemen that watch me, don't wait, I, I, I don't have regrets. Everything is just for a lesson, right? But I would recommend not waiting until you're in your mid-30s to figure it out because it truly has been in front of you your whole life. But we are so autopilot, especially in this day and age with everything being so fast and at our fingertips. We don't sit in solitude to reflect on anything in our life. And that's why we make a lot of poor choices, poor decisions, poor actions, because we never pause long enough to be aware and to think. What has been right in front of you your whole entire life if you're trying to figure out what your life's work is because everyone has it. There we go. (laughs) It really has been in front of you since you were very, very young, very, very small. I'm talking toddler years. You better believe I am cluing in to my grandchildren because they will have a season in their life where skew the the voices the loved ones around you will try to tell you oh you'd be great at this you'd be great at that it's natural don't fight I mean it's just it is going to happen so they'll miss they'll miss the opportunity of truly seeing what their life's calling their life's purpose is and that's why I'm cluing in because I know it's going to be very present and right in front of them and I want to capture it so I can be the voice to express it to them or get them thinking. And again, that doesn't necessarily mean that your life's purpose, your life's work is something that you can monetize in in draw an income, that you will necessarily have a goods or services to sell to draw that income. I was still doing life's work, but I just didn't realize I was doing life's work when I stayed home and chose to not have a career and chose to stay home and raise my children. Now, Pips was young when I when I started my business. She was like two. So 16 years ago. But for my first four, I was 100 percent stay at home. Mom ran it like a well-oiled machine. Um, but something to really reflect on this weekend. As I am brain dumping on our master's themed dinner party. Okay, so I brain dump after hosting. I am creating a folder with, I took pictures, footage. I will create that folder because I've decided I love to entertain. 
a love language of mine is entertaining. It was in front of me from day one. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> it was in front of me from day one. Imagine that. I could have monetized in that, in that area. I could have. I still would be helping other people. Interesting. But I am brain dumping. We had a lovely evening, even though I did not take a celebratory meal. So I was a clean eating machine yesterday. And because I went to bed late, I probably should have eaten one more meal because I dropped, I jumped on the scale today and I am like down an entire pound. I'm on such a strict diet. And I'm on six meals per day, but um, I we didn't get down until it was like 9.06. And I said to Paul, I really needed to eat one more meal because I, I did scale back on some of my food. My fourth, fifth, and sixth meal, I scaled back only because I wanted to try the corn casserole recipe I sent to Kirsten to make, which was really good. But, you know, we were... We're foodies, so we already talked about how we would tweak it. I had a very teeny portion, and then I had just a sliver of the fruit pizza. Fruit pizza is on my um, recipe tab. McKenna made that. I sent her the recipe, and because I may only get that once per year, I had just a sliver. So I still would consider it a clean eating day, and then I dropped a pound, and I need to go eat. I'm starving. I need to eat meal one, but I took a um, sleep in this morning. I needed it. But anyway, back to the Masters theme dinner party. Because we are such Masters fans, there's an energy in all of Paul's brothers. I mean, they just text all day long. It is nonstop. Even his one brother texted him and said, like, I, I am so pumped this week every year. I, this is just such an energy, like a week where I'm just a ball of fire. Um, so it's always fun to watch the dynamics between the brothers. And I just said every year I want to host a master's themed dinner party. So I'm keeping everything tubbed up. And it may change every year who we invite, not necessarily our kids. If Kristen and Stetson, my niece and her family, are in because they rent their home out to... Um, they live in Augusta, so they a lot of times they will come here. If they're here, we will always have the party, including them. But the key is to to brain dump, and so I even have in there what I paid for the my the floral arrangement. Any thoughts I had around that? The cookie order, or I'm sorry, the cupcake order. I tried to order cookies, but our cookie girl is moving this week, so she wasn't available. And then I just said, "We're, we're just fine." Um, also, I was made aware by Stetson, again, my my um, nephew through marriage because they live in Augusta, that you can actually get a kit right directly from the master's website that has like the pimento cheese. And he said it sells out really fast. So I've got that. I'm going to put a link in there in case I want to uh, look into that. But I do the whole brain dump so that next year when we host... I'm ready to go. There was also a couple of things on Amazon that were sold out that I couldn't get in time that I would have liked for decor pieces. And once again, I encourage you to brain dump whatever is coming up. So what other uh, big parties is on our radar for this year? Well, we don't hold high school open houses. We did for our first and second. And then we realized we didn't feel like that was a good um, source of spending for us to do something so big and grand. So the rest of the kids had a smaller scale party. And Pips is having kind of an in-between. You know, she is the baby. She is the fifth. And it is the final one. So have we spent more money on her in certain areas? Yeah, <laughs> guilty. <laughs> Believe me, the four older ones remind us. <laughs> wow, her car was 18000 <laughs> <laughs> My car was 3000 and it was a clunker. <laughs> well, do the math. There's a big age cab. <laughs> so anyway, she is having a kind of an in-between. It is not a full-blown open house, and but it's, it's larger in scale, and the guest list is bigger than um, the last three girls. <laughs> so the cost will go up a little bit. On the other hand, she is not getting any money for us for her graduation because 
the price of her car. Well, I guess, let me just be honest. My lease came up on the Equinox, the Chevrolet Equinox that we share. My lease came up in December and we just paid cash and and bought the car outright. And now it's her car. And I have no car. (laughs) I have no car. And I've only drove a car about three times in 2024. (laughs) So I, it's, yeah, things aren't well. (laughs) Things aren't well. Um, So because of that, she's not getting a graduation money where the, well, okay, so Kirsten and Haley had open houses, so they didn't get a gift of money from us. Then McKenna and Carly, because it was just immediate family only, well, like grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, that, or no, I don't even know if we went that far out. I don't think we did. I don't know. I don't remember. They got money to make up the difference. So the girls all kind of got about this because we knew what Kirsten and Haley got for um, like monetary gifts. So then we just kind of paid the girls the difference. So it really did work out for them because they still got the same amount. If this is all making sense, Chloe's not getting that because she got a pretty nice car out of the deal. (laughs) Where am I going? Her party is in August though, because June doesn't work for us when most people have um, their graduation and open houses and cookouts. But that party is, the planning of that is fully in motion. I've got rentals, um, flowers ordered, cake, cupcakes, cookies ordered. Uh, it's an, it's pretty, pretty in motion. Um, deposits are made and all of that. But that's the only real biggie on the radar for 2024 um, besides the Friday family dinners and and things like that. Um, yeah, little fa- we have a family vacation coming up in the summer. I without getting permission, <laughs> I registered the entire family to run a 5k while we're on our vacation. I didn't even ask. I just sent everyone their e- I I reached out to everyone. I said, what would be your t-shirt size? And they all got back with me what size their t-shirt would be. And then there was a cup. I, I, sometimes it's hard for me to remember your birth year. Like, so I had to make sure I had Vin's birth year correct. It was like, I knew his A. I know how old he is. I just couldn't get his birth year down. <laughs> Come on, Tracy. Do, it's, it's math. <laughs> it's math. Um, then I went in and I registered the entire family for a 5K. And then I I had everyone's email. So I just, they got their email. Later on, I just put everyone should have an email confirmation in their inbox for the 5K they're running <laughs> or walking. So I said, it's a family bonding experience. So even the little kids will be in it. So we'll have some walkers because of strollers or whatever. But yeah, we're doing a family 5K in uh, Cape Cod. Yeah, looking forward to it. It's going to be so fun. It's right in the town that we have a rental in for our um, family vacation. All right, that's a wrap. Uh, Three Week Intense, I will be over on the Facebook community. It's been a beautiful round, as it always is. I just love Three Week Intense. It's such a passion a passion project for me and big things will be happening as we roll into 2025. We're going to have merch, some rebranding. We're still in the process of possibly having an app. Um, the price, the cost for three week intents to join will go up. We don't know what those numbers will be yet, but I definitely will be bringing at the end of the year, I will have a really sweet offer for um, people to take advantage of if they want to plug in for all of 2025, all four quarters. So we're thinking about you. Um, Haley and I have a meeting tomorrow to go over some things, but lots of great things coming. Real quick, just because I went over to check some direct messages. I, I hope I'm caught up on direct messages. It's just, it's a pain point. That's why I always say it's, and, and sometimes people will put, I know you don't like getting direct messages. It's not that I don't like getting them. It's you, I I may never see them. It's not about Tracy. It's about you. It's, do you want me to see it? <laughs> do you want me to see your message? And I feel bad if you don't, but it's just the nature of the beast. You wouldn't know if you're not 
if you're not, if you don't run a business where you use Instagram as a marketing platform and you're in a position where you could get a lot of direct messages or notifications in that part of the feed. But I, I hope I'm caught up. If I'm not, if I miss yours, I apologize. It just gets lost. But interesting, I've had, we've had a couple of emails. Speaking of direct message, I just went to hit send and accidentally hit a direct message that came through. So Brooke, I'll try to get to it. <laughs> I'll try to get to you. Um, okay, so I have a healthy and fit bundle and we've had a couple of people reach out wanting more information on that and wondering how they can take advantage of it. Just go to the healthy and fit page. Everything is always on the website, folks. If you're looking for something, go to the website. You can always tap my Instagram, my, on my bio, the link, and you can get to anything there. I have a healthy and fit bundle. This comes after so many three week intense members requesting I write them their own personal diet. Well, I can't write that many diets. And I got away from writing diets. That's what I used to do initially when I started my business. But anyway, I, t I now have a bundle. It's called the healthy and fit bundle. Don't know where I got cut off. My On my profile page, there's a link that will direct you to another page with different options. Tap on that. Currently, I don't have the capacity with all the responsibilities that I have with what I do uh, to to do to take more than three healthy and fit clients per month. And the month that I run three week intense, it will be open to three week intense members before everyone else. And so, right away, three th there's only three spots per month. The th the three spots for April were immediately taken by members of Three Week Intense. So they are working with me one-on-one -on -one as well. And I wrote their diet and their, their diet plan and their cardio assignment. And then in May, I will take three healthy and fit clients. Right now, I have openings for May. Once those three spots are filled... May is out and I'm not taking any in the month of June only because it is in the the works. It's part of the plan. It's in the works that I will spend half of June because I will be vacationing. Half of June, I will be doing minimal work. <laughs> I say that. It's that's why I said it's it's a work in progress. <laughs> it's a it's an intense labor. I'm not taking any clients. I'm not doing any healthy and fit. I'm not running any workshops. Um, all my YouTube videos will be canned ahead of time. So I'm working on that. And that is why in the month of June, I will not be taking any healthy and fit clients. But come back in July, I will take three. But that will be open to three-week intense members only because... Three week intense for quarter three. Let's find it is um, taking place in July. I can give you those dates. Yes, the whole year has been mapped out. So, three week intense for quarter three starts Monday, July fifteenth. It runs for twenty one full days. The live Q and A is the Saturday before on the thirteenth, and the information uh, packet goes out on Wednesday the tenth to plan for that live Q&A. So the healthy and fit bundles for the month of July will go to or be offered to three week intense members and I, I guarantee you they will be taken. So if you're interested in the healthy and fit and you want to get on this rodeo, I would tap the link, sign up immediately for May. The terms to how the healthy and fit bundle works is all on the healthy and fit page. So you'll want to read the terms so you understand what comes with it and who is a, a good fit. I give three different scenarios of who would be a good fit. Who is this for? Okay, if you're excuse oriented and you've always got a reason why you default over here, well, watch yesterday's video. 
uh, then I don't know. You know, I don't know if it's for you. You have to decide. Or if you are, you only rely on external motivation, well, I'll fail you. So let's just get that out on the table right now. If you're looking for external motivation, nothing within, okay, I'm probably not your gal. That doesn't mean the healthy and fit bundle can't be in your future if you're someone who relies on external motivation to get the job done because we already know that fails you or you're so heavily excuse oriented. There's a prerequisite for you though, you, you, you type, okay, the passives. The prerequisite is coaching. I would say probably the life overhaul package would be the best but you could do the 12 session or the six session package and we can start the work. You can always add to the six session or 12 session package. Let's coach for maybe six months, maybe 12 months, and then you may be you may be to a different place where then you're ready to take on that next layer and do the healthy and fit. So link to get coaching today or coming up when I'm open. Eight hours ago, YouTube comment on yesterday's video. Tracy, I love your videos. Thank you. To get more subscribers, you should ask people to subscribe to your channel early on in your videos. I didn't reply, just liked it, but it's not my job to get more subscribers. That's not my life's task. That's not my focus. (laughs) My focus is to do life's task. Are you distracted? to where you miss what your role in life is, your life's work. My life's work is not to get more subscribers. It'd be nice. It's, it, it'd be nice, but does Tracy have any of that outcome? No. Here you go. I gave it away. That's not on me. My responsibility in being obedient, listen up, you need to hear this, is to do life's work. That's not life's work right there. I don't want to make up assumptions about other people, but sadly, this person may be skewed in her thinking and think that's my life's work is to get subscribers. No, I have no control over that. I have, YouTube could shut down tomorrow. That's why we have to be careful. All these platforms can go at any time that we all use as for marketing. That's not my life's work. And this person could potentially be missing the light bulb on her life's work because she's distracted by something else to get there. Not growing in your line of work or your business, where's your distractions lie? Just do life's work. And what you can't do, you have to outsource. Haley, my business manager, she is doing where she is strong. Is it her life's work? I don't have that answer. She would if she's captured it. I don't know if she has. Maybe one of these days I'll ask her. I have some ideas. I have some ideas, but that's not for me to decide. I'm not playing God in her life. She is paid to do where she's a well-oiled machine. Thank you, Lord, for blessing me with her. And she knows I feel that way. I, I, I very much verbalize that to her. My, my, my gratefulness, my thankfulness, um, all that. I, I'm a big believer in, in, in sharing that with people. Even if I don't get it from other people, I don't need it. Just share it with people. But if I were spending the time to do what she's doing in the business, I wouldn't be doing life's work. It would be a distraction. I emailed my healthy and fit clients that are doing three week intents this morning just to see how things were going. And here's one email that came back. Good morning, Tracy. I entered my information for 411 and 412 because you get a shared calendar. We have a shared calendar so I can check in on you daily to see that you're staying true to your word. I did, okay, da da da. She said, loving the meal plan and sticking to it, except for my last snack last night. I did not get to eat it. 
Love the feedback. Healthy and fit. Who doesn't want to be healthy and fit? I say that as I am cooking my healthy and fit breakfast. Let me just tell you this. This has nothing to do with sports. Your value is because of the God that created you. Your value has nothing to do. You know, sometimes going on a treasure hunt looks like work. You got to have all the right tools. You got to find a map. You got to get on the trail and you can't stop until you find it. And we can either go down and stay down where the enemy wants us so that we are helpless and we can. Ah, another one. <laughs> My camera keeps shutting off mid me talking. It's the enemy. I talk about Jesus Christ and I will continue. No apologies. And the devil just can't handle it. So threatened by me. It's crazy. Just so threatened. Yeah, well, keep being threatened because this girl, she's not stopping. I have life's work to do and I'm going to continue to do it. Praise the Lord. Amen to that. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Anything that I mentioned in the Instagram stories will be linked in the description box below. I'm also going to link last Friday's newsletter because I believe I touched on it. And then on top of that, I am going to put a link into a week ago Tuesday. So last Tuesday, not the Tuesday we just had three days ago, but last Tuesday's newsletter where my business manager, Haley, took over my newsletter. I love it. She shared, she's a huge reader. She reads, she's always reading like three books. She reads so many books in one year, it's crazy. But she shared books, she shared her Sephora purchases, she shared a couple of other things, and she also mentioned that she took the Live a Mastery Life workshop, which I talked about in, in my Instagram stories, and she shared a little example of her daily document, one of the life's tools that I walk you through in the Live a Mastery Life workshop, which again, you can get to in the description box below this video. But she also mentioned her bingo board, and She's, this bingo board, I, it just makes me giddy. I keep telling her I'm jealous. I want a bingo board. <laughs> I have so many things to keep, keep driving the bus, raising the bar, moving the needle, but I want a bingo board. Well, anyway, get this. She talked about it in that newsletter. We had so many people reach out about having, about her sharing that. So I proposed why not do a workshop? Let's do a workshop together to walk people through how to create a bingo board for, for a particular month so that they can continue to do that, to check off their boxes and to keep increasing their life, increasing who they are. I said, I think it would be super fun to do. So as you can tell, or as you saw in my Instagram stories, I took a poll asking you if you wanted to, for us to, to do this workshop. So there's a lot there, but thank you for being here. I hope you have a beautiful and blessed weekend and nothing comes your way <laughs> to trip you up or sack you in the jaw. That's my wish for you. So thanks for being here. Take care.